Hi, I'm Kathy Lindsay. Welcome to FPB's Meet the Candidates. This Cable 10 program allows you, the viewer and the voter, uh, to hear directly from our candidates. We've gathered questions from the community and now we get the chance to hear about uh, topics that are important to us and how the candidates feel about them. This is all leading up to the primary, which is on May 17th and we will encourage you to get out and vote. But first, we have to get informed. So today we have a guest, and it is Ted Collins, and he is running for the fiscal court as a magistrate in the sixth district. So I'd like to welcome you, Ted. Thank you Thank for you. being here. Thank you, Kathy. Thank Cable 10 for putting this on. Absolutely. Well, I know you've been around a long time. You've held office before, mm -hmm. and we will talk about that. But there may be people who are new in town uh, who aren't familiar with who you are. Right. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to tell us about yourself and then why you've chosen to run for okay. the court. Okay, yeah. sure, thanks. Uh -huh. My name's Ted Collins, and I'm a candidate for the 6th District Magistrate seat. I've lived in that area all my life. I live uh, in a home that my great-grandfather built, and uh, the Collins family and has lived in that area for about 200 years. And uh, I've enjoyed serving as a public servant. Mm -hmm. And I've been retired for a while and I miss helping the community. I'm still getting calls to help the community. I yeah. thought, well, I'll, I'll run for office again because I care about the people of Frankfort and Franklin County. And of course, there's a special place in my heart in the sixth district where I've lived all my life. Right. And uh, I want to be available. I want this to be a full-time job. And uh, I want people to be able to communicate with me anytime. And, of course, the best way nowadays, when your cell phone's working, I've had a little trouble with mine today, uh -huh. but when your cell phone's working, the cell phone is to call or text. And my number is area code 502-330-0491. And I encourage people to call with their concerns in the 6th District or anywhere okay. else, where else in Frankfort, Frankfort, Franklin County, because even though you're a 6th District magistrate, yeah. You still make decisions and vote on issues that affect the whole community. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I mentioned that you've served office before. Yes. So you were the sheriff here. Y yes, sheriff here for 25 years. And? County judge executive for eight years. So you've had some experience on the fiscal have court. quite a bit of experience. So I, I won't ask you what experience you have <laughs> because we all know. <laughs> okay. But because you do have that experience in the fiscal court and uh, just with government in general, you understand that when you're in that kind of position, you have a lot of people and organizations who have things they want to get done, projects for the community yes. that require funding. Yes. And that you often, always get requests for funding. Always. So uh, my question for you is how do you handle those requests and determine, uh, you know, priorities? And if you elected, what would your priorities be for investments in our community? Well, first off, you do get a lot of requests. And I've served on United, uh, um, what is it, uh, the United, uh, where they raise the money? United Way. United Way, couldn't yeah. think of it. I'm sorry, yeah, I couldn't okay. think of it. I just went blank for a second. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, I served on that board, yeah. and we had to distribute the money out, and that's tough. Mm -hmm. And same it with is. physical court, you know. Uh, many requests, uh, us, you know, you have requests from the road department, the sheriff's office, the fire department, County Clerk's Office and Property Evaluation Administrator's Office, and even the court system, and uh, and of course, then you have the charities, mm -hmm. and uh, and but uh, uh, seems like a very important topic right now is what do we do about Lakeview Park and how do we uh, expand the programs there? We're going to get to that one. Okay, well I'll, I'll, hold, <laughs> I'll hold up my thoughts okay. on that for a bit, but it, it's difficult mm -hmm. and it's and it's really hard. Yeah. And I, I give it a lot of thought before mm -hmm. I put in my two cents worth on, right. on different requests for funding. And uh, I always keep in the back of my mind, this is not my money. I'm a public servant. Right. And I've got to be thoughtful about the taxpayer's dollars because I don't want to ever get in a position where we'd have to raise taxes. I think we need to stay within the, the tax base we have now. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of that, okay. <laughs> uh, being responsible with taxpayer dollars, yeah. trying yes. to be more efficient with how yes. we spend money. And, you know, we're at a time we're hopefully coming out of a pandemic mm -hmm. uh, that has affected our economics. Uh, we are looks like we're facing some global uncertainty uh, and we're yes. seeing we're seeing prices rise as a result of that. Our gas prices are increasing. Groceries are increasing. 
And so we're having to, you know, really buckle down not only yes. at home yes. and in our businesses, but also in government. Right. So with that in mind, do you think that it's even time to start revisiting maybe the possibility of merging our governments in order to be more efficient? Well, that, I knew that question was coming. Okay. That's well, a, it comes every time. It does. It? it does. That's a tough question. <laughs> yeah. You know, if someone, you know, I was involved in the last merger and I was opposed to it. Uh-huh. Even did a commercial with then Mayor Bill May and others in the community yeah. opposing merger. And a number of people have approached me again about, can you support it this time? Can you not? And I said, if someone could show me and prove to me that we could do this more efficiently mm -hmm. and at no cost, and at no more additional cost to the city or county taxpayers, mm -hmm. I would look at it closely. Yeah. But every study and everything I've seen, uh, leads me to believe that it's going to cost more money and uh, I'm not for I'm not for putting any more burden on the taxpayer but I think they've got all they can handle sure. so I would be concerned but I okay. would look at it open-mindedly especially if somebody could prove to me that uh, it wouldn't cost the taxpayers any more money because yeah. I know there's things that you know would work better together yeah. uh, but when I was sheriff, we shared a radio system with yeah. the city police, worked great together. We mm -hmm. weren't merged, yeah. but we worked great together. Yeah. And when I was county judge, uh, worked with uh, two different mayors, mm -hmm. and uh, we worked together all the time. I was on the phone with the city manager quite often. Yeah. And uh, Well, that's really my yes. next question then yes. is, merger aside, yes. what are things that can be done to ensure that our county and city governments are working better together? Communication. Yeah. That's the key. And there's always been a little bit of a struggle here because, you know, I would, some days I would wonder myself, and, and uh, do I call the mayor or do I call the city manager? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the time you ended up calling the city manager, but there were certain things you had to deal directly with the mayor. And you always had to figure out which one to call and uh, who was going to work with the project that right. you were working on and who, who, who could be helpful to the community as a whole. Right. Well, uh, you mentioned the parks earlier, yes. and here in our community, we have yes. two different park systems. Yes. We have the city has, uh, they have their parks master right. plan. The county right. has the Lakeview Park right. plan. Right. Um, do you think that, even again, merger aside, is it possible for just certain departments to become merged, like uh, just for the parks departments? Would that be more efficient for our community? They can work together, and okay. they do work together. Uh -huh. And I encouraged that when I was county judge. Yeah. And uh, they work very good together. And uh, uh, I believe that the county park, Lakeview Park, is a great asset to our community. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I also know this community could use an indoor swimming pool. Yeah. And we we're going to have to find a way to get an <clears throat> a, a indoor swimming pool in this community. Yeah. And it may be city, county, state. Mm -hmm. And even private entities yeah. uh, that would come together and, and build an indoor swimming pool for this community. And, the, and then there, there ought to be a way that uh, we can work closely with uh, Kentucky State University on their pool. Mm -hmm. And I understand they've had some problems with pumps and heaters. Right. And, you know, find some funds to get that up and running until we can get one built for this community. Yeah. So um, the Lakeview park plan. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with the way it has been uh, presented and yes. accepted by the committee? So yes. um, how do you feel about that plan? Are you supportive of it? Well, we've got, a, we've got a good <laughs> golf course and people uh, love our golf course. Mm -hmm. It's a small golf course, mm -hmm. but people love it and the, the schools use it all the time. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything to mess that up, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, there's been some talk about, you know, maybe shortening the the driving range and then so they said it was and they said they weren't so I really don't know yeah. I would look to look at that a little closer yeah now my concern about building a big building there is uh, the space it would take up mm -hmm. and the cost right I'm I, I, I well, you know <laughs> we were getting there yeah because it's not cheap uh, no <laughs> no 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 you know I was the uh, chairman of the project development board to build mm -hmm. a courthouse uh -huh. And we built around the 1835 courthouse, as you know, on each side of it. Right. And yeah. we, we had an appropriation for that, and uh, and then it was drawn back and reduced, and then uh, we we uh, 
rebid it under the new appropriation and we started building it and it looked like to me that we were going to be able to build it under budget maybe the only one in the state that did that yeah and so when it came time to bond it i called the the construction company codell and i called the administrative office of the court and had a meeting with them mm -hmm. and i said i'd like to bond this project for a hundred thousand dollars less than the appropriation they said nobody had ever made that request before yeah i said well it's taxpayers dollars yeah it's important to you know be sure that we're spending them properly they reluctantly agreed, and mm -hmm. we built that project for 100000 less than appropriated. Now, prices have gone up yes, considerably mm -hmm. since then, and the square footage price of building something today, I'm afraid maybe more than was estimated when I saw the presentation on, on the park. Yeah, I'm hearing like $60 million. Yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of money. So how would Franklin County pay for that? Do you know, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure that... Uh, we can. I would. Right. I'd be open to listen to to a plan. Yeah. And you, of course, you'd have to bond a part of it. You know. And yeah. The, our project for build the, the courthouse was thirty million, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it was just then they cut it down just below thirty million, and we bonded that. Now that doesn't affect our bonding rating, mm -hmm. and just in a few years, uh, we'll have that paid off, and then we'll start getting rent from the administrative office of court for our courthouse. Yeah. And we have some funds then mm -hmm. that we might be able to use. Um. So just about parks in general, we've had mm -hmm. a question come in that just people want to know, so what do you think is important to have in our parks that we need here in our community? Well, like I mentioned earlier, swim pools seem to be very important to the community. Yeah. <laughs> and golf is very important to the community. Yeah. Soccer seems to be, you know, it seems to be, I hear more and more young people wanting to play soccer. Mm -hmm. and of course, we've got ball fields, softball fields, yeah. and baseball fields, and, and splash parks utilized by the, the younger folks. Oh, yeah. They love that. And... You know, there's quite a bit of controversy when we, we put in the skate park, but it seemed to work out okay. Sure. You know, and uh, uh, just in general, a, a lot of different activities and a lot of different uh, venues at the parks, I think, would be good for the community as a whole. Right. Okay, I want to move into, we'll talk a little bit about economic development and mm -hmm. growth here mm -hmm. in our community. Mm -hmm. It's it's an issue uh, that has long been talked about mm -hmm. whenever uh, we have candidates running, talk about how our, our community hasn't grown mm -hmm. in the last um, 20, 30 years. So uh, a big part of that is economic development. Right. And people have different definitions of what economic development is and means and how it affects the community. So how would you define economic development? Well, I think you support the businesses are here in the factories and, and uh, as much as you can. I, I know our distilleries are booming right now. I mm -hmm. worked closely with Buffalo Trace and uh, very closely with uh, Jim Beam when I was judge. Yeah. And uh, the bourbon industry is booming. And so, you know, we need to support them and they support us. Absolutely. They pay a lot of taxes. They do. A lot of taxes. And then the other factories and businesses, small business, we need to support them. And we always should be looking for bringing in new uh, businesses in the community. We've got the industrial park that still has some spaces. Yeah. And uh, uh, I was working with R.J. Corman, and uh, we were working on a project uh, to have a dinner train through here and actually uh, working on a project that would uh, allow some commute mm -hmm. from, from Louisville to Frankfurt and from from Frankfurt to Lexington and back and forth. Yeah. And then unfortunately, RJ passed away, but uh, um, I don't know if that can uh, be brought back into the right. discussion or not. I hope so, because I think right. that would help our community. But it's bringing in businesses uh, and, uh, and factories and such uh, for our community. So we have an organization in town, uh, KCDC, which is Kentucky Capital Development Corporation. Uh, and again, Economic development, mm -hmm. people have different ideas of what right. their role should be in, in right. our economic right. development vision here in right. our community. What do you see as their role? Well, first, it's, it was uh, uh, by statute, or not statute, by ordinance, CECEDA. Mm -hmm. And then one of the directors changed the name of it. But uh, I know it as CECEDA, mostly. Okay. And I've worked with three different directors, and uh, uh, it's important to support the director and have good board members mm -hmm. with a vision for the community in the future. Right. So So in supporting, the fiscal court currently uh, provides some funding. Right. Would, if elected, would you continue Absolutely, to support yes. that? Absolutely, okay. yes. Yes, no question about that. Okay. Yes. We have another organization called Downtown Frankfurt, Inc. Yes. Uh, supporting our businesses yes. downtown. Uh, they are also have received funding from the fiscal yes. court before. Is that something you would continue yes. to support? Absolutely. 
Absolutely, no what, question about that. What do you see as their value here? Oh, they're, well, both, both, both organizations have a great value here in uh, bringing people in the community, tourism, bring, you know, and, and bringing uh, new, new business in the community. And uh, I think they both are very, do a very good job and, yeah. and work hard for our community as a whole. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> uh, so for a while now, uh, people who are plugged in and watch a lot of the government meetings, mm -hmm. city, county, government, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of planning happening mm -hmm. because everybody has big plans and mm -hmm. strategic planning, comprehensive planning, master planning. And we love that because we like to hear and like to be a part of the planning right. and what's right. going on. At some point there has to be action taken. Right. So if elected, what specific actions would you think the fiscal court needs to take to spur uh, the growth of jobs here in our community and jobs that are providing wages that are family sustaining? Well, like I said earlier, yeah. working with uh, the Economic Development Group in downtown Frankfort, mm -hmm. uh, they'll, you know, w with support from city and county mm -hmm. and the state, since mm -hmm. we're the capital city, we, we call on the state for a lot of, lot of help. I and mean, we have coextensive duties with the Commonwealth. So, Working together, I believe we can bring in some new businesses, new factories, and, and, and uh, develop uh, additional jobs for our community. Okay. Uh, earlier you mentioned Buffalo Trace. I did. And for those who may not be familiar, mm -hmm. Buffalo Trace has proposed an expansion that is going to go into the Peaks Mill area. Mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of supporters for that because Buffalo Trace is good to our community mm -hmm. and provides a lot to our community but they're all you know also people who oppose that because they love Peaks Mill and the area and they want to preserve that area yes. uh, so my question to you is if elected would you support uh, Buffalo Trace building bourbon warehouses in areas that are currently zoned agricultural or rural residential First off, I say the Peaks Mill is a beautiful part of our community. It is. And the Elk Creek running through it is second to none. Yes. I would have to study that uh, and hear the pros and cons, and I really haven't heard enough about that to give you an informed decision at this time. Uh -huh. But I certainly look at it open-mindedly. Okay. Well, in addition to Buffalo Trace, mm -hmm. there are other um, high-profile development projects mm -hmm. that have been in front of the fiscal court and just in, in front of the public in mm -hmm. general. Uh, for example, the Duncan Road uh, rezoning, and then the city has recently uh, talked about the Paddocks area, which is going to be developed out by I-64 and 127. Uh, when it comes to projects like that, that go before the city commission or the fiscal court, you have people on both sides who yes. are for it, ag yes. against it, for, you know. People say that a lot of times it boils down to, are you pro-development or are you pro-preservation? Where do you think you fall in that? That's a tough one. It is. Uh, because I see both sides of that issue. Sure. But in most cases, I'm pro-development. Okay. Because a lot of times, you know, people would say, well, you have to find a balance. Mm -hmm. and, and so what are, the, what are the tipping points for you? You know, there's certain areas in Frankfort, Franklin County that uh, have been designated uh, as uh, areas that need to be preserved. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of farms in the community have, have uh, went into this program where it can always only only be farmland and they get some tax incentives for doing that. Sure. And you know we need to respect that too and uh, it's a case-by-case -case situation you just have to look at it and see what, how it affects the community as a whole and how right. it affects the environment. Right. Uh, and still talking about growth, a lot of, uh, there's a term that gets thrown around quite a bit, and they call it smart growth. Right. Some people may not know what that is. So what do you think smart growth is? First, studying the project and yeah. knowing all about it. Yeah. And see how it does affect the environment. And if it's a project that brings jobs to the community mm -hmm. and doesn't destroy the environment, it, you know, right. then I think that's something that you would consider smart growth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a lot of uh, um, areas in town that are have been developed at one point and now they're abandoned. Mm -hmm. What would you do to address the issue of infill here in our community? Well, a lot of the buildings that I'm aware of downtown have belonged to some families, like my family has been in the community for about 200 years. Yeah. And they're a little reluctant to sell. I know of, of several pieces of property mm -hmm. that people would like to purchase yeah, and and the uh, the the owners don't want to sell it, 
but it's, it's sitting empty. I think we need to sit down with them and have discussion now. You know, if you don't want to sell it and you don't want to fix it up, mm -hmm. what about leasing it on a long-term basis mm -hmm. or maybe uh, rent to buy in the future and see if we could work out some type of an agreement where everybody's happy and, and gets the new businesses started. Right. And, and uh, these buildings set empty. It's very difficult for them to survive without, without life in them. And I think we need to try to work with the owners and try to try to uh, see if we can find some happy medium where everybody's happy about getting to get them uh, uh, revitalized and, sure. and yeah. new businesses in. Um, speaking of businesses, mm -hmm. what do you see as the uh, top concerns, particularly from the business community, that the fiscal court could address? Well, I want to tell you something. Okay. And it's not easy for me to say. Uh-oh. I didn't do as much as I would like to have done mm -hmm. on working with with uh, developers and and people that are in business building the courthouse and that was yeah. a, the whole eight years of my judgeship mm -hmm. took a lot of time sure. and I and I, I didn't get to spend enough time working with planning and zoning both city and county mm -hmm. and the developers and people that was wanting to come into our community and build mm -hmm. um, I hear all the time that it's difficult to build in Frankfort and Franklin County. And mm -hmm. if elected magistrate, I want to get back on that. I had a couple, three meetings, didn't go very well, didn't get much traction. Mm -hmm. I want to spend a great deal of time on trying to work with the community <clears throat> to see if we can be more friendly about yeah. bringing in uh, uh, different businesses and factories and working with the local yeah. developers where the permitting is it's a smoother transition than it has been for quite a while. Yeah. Well, um, that leads into actually main answer. <laughs> my next question uh -huh. is, you know, over the past years, we've recognized that Franklin County need, we need to become less dependent on state government Yes. and start focusing more yes. on, uh, private sector jobs and yes. entrepreneurships and right. bringing new businesses in here. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are some things that you can do to, improve the business uh, culture and climate here in Franklin County, but also we just, we need to be more competitive with our uh, surrounding counties. Yes, How we do. How can we do that? Well, just like I said a moment yeah. ago, yeah. we, we got to find a way to be a little more friendly yeah. and uh, not so difficult yeah. to, to get a permit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, when they do inspections, you got to, you, you've, you've got to build it to certain standards. And you've got your electrical inspections got to be done correctly. Yeah. And and the electrical inspector and the building inspector they've got to see that it's done so it's safe for everybody. Sure. But what I hear is it's hard to get in touch uh, with sometimes with planning and zoning, mm -hmm. city or county. I mm -hmm. hear I hear that uh, uh, sometimes the inspectors have more work than than they can do. And they need additional help. Yeah. And uh, there, there may be times that we need to contract with. Uh, other communities bring some additional inspectors in when we get overloaded, you know, so, yeah. so we can make this smooth transition for, uh, for our developers. I know one issue for employers right now, not only here mm. in our county, but nationwide, mm -hmm. is right. workforce. Right. Is employment. What are right. some, what are some uh, steps that the fiscal court can take maybe to help grow the size and skill of our workforce here in Franklin County? We can spend time in the schools. My first two or three terms as sheriff, I went to the schools and spoke time and time again. The last two years, uh, the last two terms of my sheriff, and I don't remember maybe once or twice while I was judge, people asked me, the different ones asked me, uh, schools asked me to come speak. Yeah. I, I did go speak at uh, Kentucky State University to a class. I think us elected officials need to get in the schools, mm -hmm. talk to our students, yeah. both high school, uh, well, all three high schools, and uh, Kentucky State University, and encourage them to look for jobs in the community and stay at home. Yeah. Another reason to improve our park system. <laughs> That's right. Right, so uh, that would be uh, one of the things we could do is, is get into school systems, and I guess work with the superintendents and the principals and teachers to get to school and talk to, you know, seniors especially. Right. And uh, okay. I think that would be helpful. Sure. So I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm sure you stay plugged in, even though you, you know, you're you not you know, in the office right now, but I'm right. sure you stay plugged in. Mm -hmm. So do you think the fiscal court right now, as it is, is adequately transparent? Well, we spend a lot of time uh, 
discussing the issues. Uh, mm -hmm. The court meetings last a long time. It seems it seems to be uh, <laughs> yeah. pretty transparent. Yeah. Okay. Are there any decisions or steps the fiscal court has taken that, looking back on now, that you would have done differently if you were on the fiscal court? One thing that concerned me. I was watching the other yeah. night. One thing concerned me was uh, not having full support of the Humane Society. Yeah. Let me tell you, when I was sheriff, I worked with the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. And when I was judge, I worked with the Humane Society. And if elected as magistrate, yeah. I want to be a big supporter of the Humane Society because <laughs> I know right. what it would take and what it would cost for us to take that, that project over oh, yeah. totally. So, you know, the $200,000 that they needed mm -hmm. for the road, mm -hmm. uh, that's money very well spent. So I'd be very supportive of that. Okay. Well, I, we're coming to a close. Already? <laughs> I know. That would look great, didn't it? It sure did. So I'm going to give you a, um, a minute or two to uh -huh. look directly into the camera uh -huh. and talk to our viewers who are your voters, mm -hmm. and you tell them why it's important that they vote for you and why they should. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh -huh. Thank again, Kathy and sure. Cable Tim for putting this on. Well, I miss serving you folks. I'm, I've been a public servant for most of my adult life. I love helping people. Uh, I care about you. I care about the taxpayer, I care about the voter, I care about everybody in Frankfort and Franklin County, and a special place in my heart since my family and I have lived in the district for about 200 years for the 6th District. So I humbly ask for your support for 6th District Magistrate, and thanks again, and God bless all. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here today, and I know our viewers appreciate hearing from you. Um, I want to remind our viewers to go vote on May 17th and then go home and tune in to Cable 10 and check out the live election returns because it is election season and this is your opportunity to get informed and then go voice your choice. Thanks, we'll see you next time.